So now let's see the example of a um, the differentiation of a function that has multiple outputs, uh, multiple inputs. So in this example, we have a function that has two inputs. So uh, we, it's just you know a simple example for a multi-input function uh, where we will examine uh, how forward differentiation uh, works, okay, using the computation graph. So first we need to create a graph that encodes or represents this function, uh, which is composed of two elementary functions, which is um, a quadratic or a parabola here. And the operator uh, that we have uh, here is a plus, so it's an addition that we're doing. So it's simple to create the graph. First, we need to start with the inputs. So we have all the inputs here, so W1 and W2. And then uh, we look at the function that we apply to W1. So it's we, we're, we're, we will square it, so it's a, uh, a squaring function. And this will define the A. So A is basically W1 squared, and B is W2 squared. And our final node here is C, which computes the whole function. So here we have the whole function uh, where we add up the two terms, the first term and the second term, okay? So now after ca ca computing or like uh, defining this graph, we can see how we're going to differentiate. So now remember the function here, G, is a multi-input function. So we need to calculate the gradient of G uh, with respect to W. So here the gradient will have two elements, the partial um, derivative of G with respect to the first variable uh, or input W1 and DG DW2. All right, so it's a vector over here. So C should give us a vector. So here, if we're gonna add differentiation, we will have two elements that we need to define uh, over there. So let's look at this graph right here. So first we do the same thing. We take, we, we select our parent node. So we we have two uh, variables here. And for each parent node independently, we'll look at its child node. So W1 has A as a child node. So we begin uh, by computing the gradient at each input node. So individually W1 and W2 and then move to the children uh, of our input nodes, beginning at node A, where we calculate the gradient of A. So the gradient of node A is basically, because it's a function that depends on uh, W1 and W2, it's the a partial derivative of A with respect to W1 and W2 with the second input, because you have multi-input function, so you need to calculate it, uh, calculate you know uh, all terms here, uh, with respect to the two variables, okay? The two inputs. So uh, we have a vector. So you can see that we have a vector that represents the, um, the partial derivative of A with respect to the first uh, variable and the second variable. This is uh, the derivative of the whole A, right? And for W1, actually, it's, this is a trivial case, guys. So you can see if we calculate it, so we calculate the partial derivative of W1 with respect to W1, this gives us value one, right? And when we calculate uh, the partial derivative of W1 with respect to W2, W1 actually doesn't depend on W2. It's not a function of W2, uh, so it doesn't depend on it. So we're gonna have A is zero, okay? So this is zero. So here we'll also have um, one and we'll have zero here, okay? And uh, we do the same for B. So B, uh, we calculate the partial derivative with respect to both, uh, as I mentioned, to both W1 and W2, because these are our input variables. And similarly, we can calculate the partial derivatives of B. So the partial derivatives of B are DB with, with respect to DW1. So if we're gonna write the vector in this way, uh, and then DB, dw2 so these are the partial derivatives and this gives you it gives us the db with respect to dw where w is equal w1 w2 all right so this is our uh the first you know kind of computation where we take each parent node and calculate uh, now the partial derivatives with respect to 
uh, these two variables. Of course, if we have other variables, for example, Wn, where we need to add all of those until Wn, all right? So we'll have multiple variables because now our function A, B, and all other intermediate functions, they depend on all these uh, inputs. Cool, so now let's remove that and then go forward. So the last step, uh, if you guys remember, so we just uh, moved forward from uh, and crossed these two uh, forward paths. And now we're going to cross the, the, the ultimate one to get our final derivative over here. So we're looking for these two terms. So let's look, how are we going to do that? Now uh, we, we calculate also the gradient at the common uh, child node. So this is a common child node. So this child node has two inputs. So one from node A and one from node B. And it's the same thing. Remember guys, in this forward automatic um, differentiation, we always calculate the derivative at any node with respect to what? The input variables. So we always have the derivative. So let's color that again with respect to the two input variables in this case, if you have more, you're gonna add more and your gradient vector will become, of course, longer and has, uh, will have more elements, all right? So this is actually very simple uh, right here. And uh, what we also have, I want to remind you that we are evaluating the function. So W1 is the input variables. If we set them in, uh, if we set these values, so let's say for example, equals to 0 0.5 and 0 0.8, we, we can do a simple forward pass Calculate, update the A, update the, the B, and C is A plus B, so we can update the C at the end. So we can also evaluate the function and not only calculate its uh, derivatives with respect to the input variables, all right? Cool, so now uh, this is, you know, uh, the final graph. What we know this is that we have so many zero elements, okay? So let's look at these uh, these these values right here. So first, uh, a, remember, what is the function A? A is equal to W1 squared, and B is equal to W2 squared, all right? Now, when we calculate the, um, the derivative, A depends only on W1, so we keep this term, we will calculate it. However, A does not depend on W2, so this derivative, because we don't have a W2 here, when we, when we derive you know, W1 squared with respect to W2, it doesn't depend, so it's zero, right? It's a constant, so it's zero over there. So we're gonna put zero here. And the same, when we derive B with respect to W1, it doesn't depend on the variable W1, so it's set to zero. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, W2, uh, W1 doesn't depend on W2, so we have a zero here and we have a zero there. So what you notice here, in this simple, simple example, we have so many zeros in our, you know, like computation graph, okay? Differentiation, forward differentiation graph. Now, what happens is that uh, this may be problematic. So we'll talk about it in a bit, but keep that in mind. Keep that, that many actually uh, nodes will have a zero partial derivatives with respect to some input variables. Next, uh, we're going to talk, I'm going to give you another example. So a more complex example. So here, for example, uh, this is, you know, uh, another function. And you can see that this function is actually uh, quite complex. Yeah. So if I ask you now to take some time and calculate uh, d, g with respect to w, right? So you need to remember all the mathematical rules to write the formula, the final formula. <laughs> you know, mathematically, which will lead you to this whole block right here. So uh, the derivation is not uh, a very easy task. So it's kind of uh, a heavy task and you need to be very careful with your calculations to not make any mistake if you want to just do it in one go implicitly without using any computation graphs, okay? However, uh, the power or the potential, I would say, of computation, um, uh, you know, uh, a computation graph, if you map this into um, 
a graph, right? Then you will break it down into different pieces. So you'll take, you know, for example, this and you multiply it by this one and you multiply it by that one. And then you're going to multiply it eventually by the one over log, right? Of, you know, this term basically, right? So you break it down into different sub functions. And here you have another sub function, which is, you know, the squaring function. And you have plus one, which is a constant. And here you have, you know, squared and you have w. So you're going to build the graph step by step. And what happens when you, when you do this, uh, you can easily calculate your partial derivatives. Uh, if we look at, well, here it's a multi-dimensional um, function, but yeah, so you can calculate them step-by-step step in, in, in a simpler way, right? So the cool thing about computation, um, you know, graphs is that they allow us to find, you know, more ease in uh, differentiating, you know, some functions, okay? Especially complex functions. So here, uh, you know, like we can, uh, you know, like, as I said, we can calculate this implicitly or we can use uh, a graph. The only thing with graph is that this graph will be big, right? So you're, the more parameters you have, the, the heavier function, the more Ws you have. If you go from W1 to Wn and you have, you know, uh, a, a very high dimensional uh, space with loads of parameters, like a neural network, right? Then uh, you're gonna, you need to remember how you're going to parse the graph. So you need to store the graph and you need to store all elements that, connect, you know, uh, to every single node in the graph. So it's actually very, com uh, it's actually very, um, com not, not very complex. I mean, it's, it's costly, it could be costly. So you need to remember and store this graph and uh, store relationship uh, between uh, parents and nodes, uh, parents and child, uh, children nodes, okay? So that's, that's not too bad uh, if you can still do that. So computation will be much lighter and easier, but it comes at the storage cost. So you need to do some storing of this graph. So the advantage of uh, implicitly constructing the graph is that the corresponding ca calculator is lightweight. So it doesn't mean uh, explicitly uh, constructing. It means like you're, you're, you're calculating this directly. So if you calculate this directly, it's lightweight. You don't need to store any graph, okay? So there is no need of storing any graph. So, uh, you know, this is kind of one go and you do it mathematically and you derive, differentiate directly. On the other hand, if you implement a calculator uh, that explicitly constructs a computation, the computation graphs, uh, this requires additional tools, like, for example, a parser to parse the graph, okay, to walk through the graph, traverse the graph. And um, however, uh, the good news is that it allows for easier computation of high order derivatives. So when you have high order derivatives, uh, partial derivatives of your function, this becomes way easier using a computation graph, which, which, which is something we need in neural networks, okay? Cool. So I think now we covered uh, the uh, um, you know uh, the concept of forward differentiation using a forward pass from parent to children nodes uh, using uh, a single input and a multi input function. We have seen that um, actually this is a good idea, but it has some uh, compute budget cost uh, that comes with it. But it is very effective in calculating complex derivatives, especially when you have also high order derivatives, okay, of complex nonlinear uh, big functions, all right? Now, we're going to move to the next step, which is uh, the concept of backpropagation or what we call reverse mode of automatic differentiation. So the reverse mode of automatic differentiation is the opposite of the forward. So instead of basically traversing the graph, uh, and this, you know, from uh, from left to right, we're going to have a reverse mode and traverse it from uh, right to left. So why we have this, why this was introduced. So let's look at the issues that come first with the forward uh, pass. So remember, guys, in the forward pass, where do we find the final function? The final function or derivative is calculated in the uh the right node okay the right node so everything is stored here so this derivative so let's look, go back to this graph where it is where is it sorry mm -hmm. so this is the final derivative of my function this is d g, uh, g with respect to uh so we have partial derivative w1 so it's actually exactly this term 
So our function is evaluated right here in the forward pass, all right? So with that, let's look at some issues that come with this. So the forward pass can be inefficient in many kinds of multi-input functions. So why is that? Because, you know, uh, many nodes uh, in the computation graph uh, may only take just a few inputs, which means many of these nodes will be uh, set to zero. So, uh, so we have a few inputs, a few inputs. Okay, so let's look at this. We have a few inputs to each node. So this node has only one single input. This node has only two inputs, for example. Okay, so this, the second limitation of what it says, let me read it uh, uh, so, um, uh, here. So while most of the nodes in the computation graph of multi-input function may only take in just a few inputs, we compute the complete gradient with respect to all the inputs at each and every node. Okay, so let's look at this uh, to uh, explain again. So here, it means that every single node in the forward pass, in the regular forward pass, we're calculating the derivative of each and every node with respect to what? With respect to all inputs. So if I have millions of inputs, then this will explode because every time and every node I'm out calculating the, you know, like the different, the, the, the derivative with respect to these, two, the all of these, you know, inputs. So that's quite heavy. That's very heavy to see these long vectors. So now, if I have this graph, let me put it this way. So we have, you know, W1, W2, and many others. So W1, W2, and WD, for example. And then uh, we're gonna move to uh, kind of, you know, we have something like this, and then maybe uh, this will connect to other, other uh, guys. But what's happening here that because I have a D, you know, D inputs, Every time I'm storing a node A, B, but I'm storing a long dimensional vector, very, very long, that has how many, how many uh, inputs? D, right? Because every time you need to differentiate with respect to all inputs variables in pink, as you guys can see here. So all input variables. So this is really heavy. I need to store all these vectors. I need to derive with respect to all the input variables. So this forward, this feed forward uh, computation um, or differentiation is actually uh, not that good because uh, I only get the final gradient if I differentiate with respect to all graph and at every single node. Now, this is a considerable waste of computation uh, because we know that partial derivatives of any node with respect to the original input of the function that it doesn't uh, it does not take in will always be equal to zero. So what this tells us is that you end up calculating the derivative, look here, of this A with respect to W2, but you know that A doesn't depend on W2. We know that B doesn't depend on W1. So uh, we know that many values here uh, for A and for B may not depend on several inputs, right? So you're going to have lots of zeros and you're wasting time calculating all of those, right? So you may not want to calculate these partial derivatives uh, because they're going to waste your time. So th they won't count. They won't affect your, your data because you're, you're, you're only looking at A with respect to its ancestor, right? So you're looking at the final one and let's see how C changes with respect to my ancestor and to my uh, other ancestor node, okay? So grand, 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 grandparents. So, so that's not smart. So a smarter idea is to kind of look at my, only my parents. So I don't care about my ancestors. I'm gonna do it locally. Let me, let's see if we can calculate this with respect to only these two parent nodes. And uh, in that sense, I will, uh, kind of, you know, remove the dependency, uh, the immediate or direct dependency on the W1 and W2 and solve this in a kind of, you know, more uh, in, in a backward way where I look at this and it's immediate parents and these guys, immediate parents, etc. So this is basically, um, this basically allows us to uh, uh, model this differently. So C depends on A and B, but A and B may not depend on W1 and W directly. So it doesn't depend on W1 and W directly, right? So let's look at this differently. So how does this problem, how do we solve this problem? How, 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 how do we reformalize it, okay? So uh, 
this summarizes what I was talking about. So this is basically the original feed forward that uh, differentiates with respect to the original variables and calculates uh, them at each node, okay? So we have lots of zeros. Now let's look at this example. This example shows this clearly. So now we have four inputs. What happens to my partial derivatives? So my partial derivatives, my G here, which is the final node, depends on uh, W1, W2, 3, 4. And we're going to calculate these everywhere, okay? Everywhere. So I have a four dimensional vector at every single node because we have four variables, one, two, three, four. Although this guy depends only on two nodes, it ended up with four dimensions here because of, of, you know, like of the dependency on the original, the original uh, dimensions or the original inputs. So something we know this also is the zero. So in addition to the heavy calculation, as I mentioned, and the heavy dimensions, there are so many values that are unnecessary. So here, uh, this is a waste of calculation. We're calculating, but it's not affecting my final gradient because all of those are zeros, okay? So how do we solve this? So this is actually, uh, it, it will be solved using a very simple, simple idea. So I'll explain it in a, in a minute. But yeah, so basically we know this here that over half of the partial derivatives are trivial zeros because they do not depend on these variables. All right, and you can do this manually if you guys, I really encourage you to kind of take pen and paper and recalculate this manually, all right? So this is a big waste of computational uh, resources and power. So how do we solve this? Um, so to remedy or to solve this inefficiency and also inefficiency at all levels, inefficiency in calculating uh, derivatives with respect to original variables and also uh, you know this waste of zero uh, derivation, um, automatic differentiation can be performed in a reverse mode, which consists of a forward and reverse or backward sweep through the computation graph of a function, all right? So what do we do in the forward sweep? So this is the key here. So in the forward sweep of the reverse mode, so now we are in a reverse mode, so we were doing a different type of forward sweep. So we're changing our forward sweep. So it's not as the old one, it's a new one. So in the reverse mode, we have a forward sweep we traverse um, uh, the computation graph in forward direction from left to right and uh, recursively. And uh, only at each node, what do we do? Let me use different color. We compute the partial derivative of each child node with respect to only its parents. I don't care about my ancestor. So here we do not care about input nodes or early, the uh, the first ancestors, okay? The very first ancestors. So I don't care about the W1s and W, for example, D if I have D uh, inputs, right? So this is the good thing. We only care about the immediate parents and only. So which means in the forward pass, let's look at this. So in the forward pass right here, or the forward sweep, we take, uh, we have W1, so these are the variables. So let's um, do the variables in a different color. Uh, maybe pink, okay. So W1, W2, A and B. So these are where we evaluate. Now we're gonna calculate the gradient. So the gradient of W1 with respect to uh, W1 is one, W2 with respect to W2 is two. So now we're doing only this with respect to W1, which is itself, right? And then itself, so DW2 with respect to W2, which is equal to one. And next, in the next node, we calculate the derivative of A with respect to its parent node. So what is its parent node? Its parent node is W1. So we would differentiate with respect to W1. For B, it's W2 only. So we dif differentiate with respect to W2. Now let's move next. This becomes more interesting at this level. So at this level, now we move forward. These guys are fixed. So we calculated them, uh, you know, right here. So these are fixed, okay? And now we move to the next, the new child node. So the child node C has for parents A and for parents B. So now we're going to calculate the, uh, you know, the derivative of C with respect to its parent node A and its parent node B. All right, so now this is a bit different now. 
okay? So this is the forward pass. We call it the forward pass in the reverse or back propagation mode. So the back propagation mode or the has or re, the reverse mode has two parts, it has a forward pass one and then a second step, which is a backward pass or a backward sweep. So what do we do in the backward sweep? So basically, uh, let me explain this. So we read through the text and we, we explain step by step. So in the backward sweep, in the forward sweep, so uh, once the forward sweep is complete, so we have completed it, we change course and traverse the computation graph in the reverse direction. So what does it mean in the reverse direction? So we're gonna start from this block right here, okay? So this block right here and traverse back. So we're starting from the final node and we're, re we're, we're traversing the, uh, uh, the computation graph backwardly. All right, so we start from the final node and uh, propagate back. So uh, as we do that, we uh, we start at the end node and traverse backwards recursively from right to left as we reach the input nodes. So what happens at every step? This is the most important step. So at every step of the process, we update. So there is an update that happens to this uh, uh, derivative here. So look, this derivative before was only this term. Okay, so it's a partial derivative of A with respect to W1. Now we're gonna update this derivative uh, using the backward sweep. So in the backward sweep, we will uh, update it. And how do we update it? So we update the partial derivative of each parent by multiplying it by the partial derivative of its child node with respect to the parent. So we multiply it by the derivative, okay? of the child node C with respect to the parent, that parent, which is A. So here we add D C with respect to the node, the parent node A, okay? So this is the parent node of this child node, and these are the parents in blue, okay? We do the same for the second one. So here we have the child node, we calculate uh, its derivative, we multiply the old derivative and the forward sweep by the derivative of C with respect to B. Uh, uh, over here and B is the, uh, the, the, um, the parent node. So when the parent node has multiple children, uh, um, the accumulated partials should be added. So we add them up, so not multiplied, and this is because of the chain rule. So you can guys, easily verify the chain rule and see when we have actually a parent node has multiple children, which means something like this, we we will do some summation. So it becomes plus and we do a summation over there. And this applies inherently the, cha the chain rule. So once, the, uh, so once we do that to all graphs, so here um, uh, when the backward suite is completed, we will have recursively constructed the gradient of the function with respect to all of its inputs. So here, uh, as we move backwards, so we have updated this guy. So let's see here. So this is, you know, uh, our updated uh, pass. And then we're gonna move to uh, the uh, next parents. So the parents of these nodes. So what we do, we take basically the original, uh, the original weight. What is the original uh, function is one, okay? And we multiply it by uh, the, this, this basically this uh, derivative right here uh, with respect to W1 and we have it over there. So we just need to simply multiply because this is already a derivative with respect to uh, the original, uh, you know, the original uh, uh, variable. And by doing this multiplication, what do we get? We get the final gradient. So the gradient actually of the loss is now calculated right here. So this is the full gradient. So the gradient of G is equal to this first term. So I'm going to copy paste it. Uh, copy paste right here and this second term. So now actually we find the gradient backwardly, uh, not at the at the end, but at the very beginning. Uh, Paste image, and here we go. Okay, so if you calculate that, we're gonna get uh, the gradient right here. 
so yeah, so this is basically, um, you know, the idea of the uh, reverse mode of differentiation. So it allows us to calculate, to only store the gradients that matter. We don't need to calculate with respect to the uh, original, you know, the all the way back to the original ancestors. We just take it one step at a time and we update using the chain rule and we go, we traverse the back backwardly and the final gradient will be calculated over here as opposed to the, the original forward pass where, where the final gradient is over there, okay? Cool, so that's that. So now let's have this tiny exercise. So we have seen this function earlier. So what I want you guys to do is um, to take some time and to do the new forward, the reverse mode. So the reverse mode has two steps. So we're gonna do the reverse mode here. Okay. And I'm going to actually mask all of these values. So these are uh, of the, actually this one is correct. So let's leave that. So here I'm gonna mask all these values because now we need to rewrite them. So I copy pasted the original uh, forward pass that calculates the gradient at this level. So the gradient is here, but now using the backward pass, the gradient will be actually calculated over there. All right, so let's you know take um, a few minutes and uh, do this by hand. So uh, I'm not gonna, yeah, so I'm gonna just remove these values and you guys can update them uh, accordingly. So in the forward mode and also in the backward mode. Okay, so I, I kept only that. Yeah, so let's take a few minutes and try uh, to solve this uh, properly, if you remember the main idea.